I am back exactly for the same reason, Mr. Speaker, that you are talking up there. If you are to shut the mouths of the members of parliament so that they do not talk about what has to do with their people, I am telling you, you will need something else other than just this. Because I am standing here for representing my people properly and someone signs that I should be arrested and you did not cover me. You did not cover me. I wrote two letters to you telling you that there is an order on my head and if I am to come here and cannot talk on behalf of my people, there is no way, Mr. Speaker, please, you cannot shut down the mouths of the people who represent their people. You cannot do it. Where else can we say these things? Where else? Are you telling us to form another assembly? Then you tell us. Do we belong to this country? If we belong to this country, Mr. Speaker, you will hear me out. You will listen to me. There has been, I'm telling you, Mr. Speaker, please, Mr. Speaker, please, with all due respect, I have been chased through the bushes for the past three months. I cannot come here and you tell me that I should be discussing the Economic and Social Council, our children out of school, our lawyers in jail, and all that is happening in West Cameroon, it means nothing to you. Where in your standing orders, Mr. Speaker, where in your standing orders do you have space for us to discuss the issues that have to do with the people of West Cameroon? You tell me, then I'll go and sit down. Because you don't seem to have an agenda for us. You don't seem to have it. So what are we supposed to do? It is also part of the humiliation. Mr. Speaker, Mr. Speaker, yeah, I am now telling you that the person who ordered for my arrest, tell him I am here. He can come and take me from this National Assembly. And the people of West Cameroon would know that they don't belong here. I am being frank with you. The representatives of the people have the power to say it as it is at any time. And if we come here and you shut us down, you want to kill those people out there. You want to kill those people out there. So what should we do? That is your wish, Mr. Speaker. I should have waited for them to bring my head to you. That is what you would have wanted. I simply say no. Mr. Speaker, can you now, on this floor, give the nation that you call yours, people can do what has been done to our children in West Cameroon. I call it West Cameroon because you will never take it out of our mouths again because that is a territory in which we believe in freedom. To go out on the street and demonstrate is a basic right for us. And that is why we are saying that there are two Cameroons that came together. If you are telling us, like a state minister stood here last year and told us that what happened in Cameroon is like dropping a few cubes of sugar into a basin of water. Who is the sugar and who is the water? I'm asking the government bench of Cameroon. Who is that you rap our children? My brother's daughter has been raped in Boya. I swear to you, the government of this country, does the president of this country know that the governors and the DOs and all the administrators you are sent to West Cameroon are out there behaving exactly like an army of occupation. Our people have no way to go. We have made all the efforts. Our ancestors and our forefathers trusted you to go into a gentleman's agreement that two people who considered themselves brothers could go to live together. Uh, if this is what you show us after 55 years, then those who are saying that we should break Cameroon are right. They are correct. The people of West Cameroon cannot be your slaves. The people of West Cameroon are not. You did not conquer them in war. If this is what you are saying that we should live in, I say simply, no, it will not work. How do you have an army that's supposed to protect children? Step out there, beat them, and rape some. It is not heard of. 
in any country. This is the 21st century, and anybody who does that and cannot be willing for his government to pay the price, we will exact it on you. Because you are making us believe that we went to the wrong place. What is there to say? I want the world to know and to have it on record that we have made efforts. I have sat with ministers and listened to them talk. The first one was the then Minister of Justice, Amadou Ali, 10 years ago. And I took my time, drove from Kumo to Yaoundé to tell him something is brewing out there. This thing that you people are sending gendarmes to beat people up and say all of these things, there is pain in West Cameroon. And as Minister of Justice, be very careful what happens there. And he turned around, looked at me, and told me, Mr. Wilbur, it is your people who choose to come here. He is alive. He told me. Last week, I went to see the Minister of Higher Education, Professor Famin Dongo, and I told him, the problems in Cameroon, the problem we have in West Cameroon, is the problem that will bring down Cameroon. If you do not handle it well, you will not know Cameroon as it is in a few months or in a few years. When people have had pent-up anger and pain, humiliation, for over 50 years, when it bursts out, you will never be able to control it. And I told him, and simply what he asked me was, qu'est-ce que vous allez faire? Because you have your army of occupation out in West Cameroon, you believe that when the people will rise, even if you took the whole of the French army and added to yours, you will never bring them down. And we have no need for that. We don't have any need for that in the 21st century. I was one of the believers in a unified Cameroon. And I want to tell this house that what has happened to those children in Boya University and in Baminda has convinced me that the people who say Cameroon should go in two parts are correct. And there are more and more of us out there who now believe that it is the ultimate end. I listened the other night an offer of uh, a thousand jobs, an offer of uh, two billion francs for lay schools, and I laughed at myself. Are my people slaves? So you now take them to be your dogs that you can beat and wound and maim, break their bones, then throw a piece of meat for them to fight over. It has to end. If we, the people of West Cameroon, have to continue doing what we are doing, it is because we believe that the more is always the merrier. When you have more people, you have more chances of surviving in life. If the more people who are the people of East Cameroon have proven to us that our blood means nothing, then it is time for us to say it will soon be over. I want to give you a quote here in this house that I borrowed from the American liberators. When injustice becomes law, resistance becomes a duty. The people of West Cameroon have a duty to resist your oppression. I call it oppression because of what I've seen in the field. Let me quote you another two instances. Three weeks ago, there was an incident in Bangalore, which is a neighboring village to Jakiri, where I come from. And I don't know what it was about, and a Yandam officer was killed. And the forces of law and order under the instructions of the SDO of Ngokitunya move into Jakiri, a neighboring village, and take away a hundred men. Just beat them up, break their bones, and then just leave them there. And I went to that place where he took these people, and I told him, Mr. SDO, you are going to release my people. He sent soldiers to me, and one of them told me, I said, I am the representative of these people because I'm a parliamentarian. And the guy, young man, turned around and asked me, And he drew a line on the ground to tell me, if you cross here, you will see the consequences. Unfortunately for him, 
I happen to be a descendant of the warriors of so nobody draws a line before me. And I crossed and I told him, shoot me. I told the SDO, release my people. In 12 hours, he released them. But some are still lying in the hospital. They beat and kicked a woman and she miscarried, a pregnant woman. And nobody can question this. That is the reason in this master plan to finish our culture and our people. You have chosen that every single administrator or every commander of the army is from East Cameroon. That is why they sit there and they can kill the people without remorse. This has to end. Mr. President, Mr. Speaker, I want to repeat this quote. When injustice becomes law, resistance becomes a duty. We, the people of West Cameroon, will resist you. And if you want to take that territory by force, you will kill to the last man before you take it. And you can start from me today. You can start from me. It has to end. Somebody has to know that this is not how we treat a people. 50 years is too long. 50 years is a very, very long time. And we come here and sit, just talking about the budget. You normalize murder. You normalize rape. Mr. Speaker, I am sorry to tell you that this is part of the resistance. You will hear me to the end. When injustice becomes law, resistance becomes a duty. It is my duty to defend my people. You will not stop me because of lack of time. Or if you want to, you can call your brutal gendarmes to come and kill me here. I will not. I will not. I want you to hear this, Mr. Speaker, that my people are suffering and that the cube of sugar that was defined in this house. Are you just angry, Mr. Speaker? That the person you consider your slave, a slave has risen in the master's house and is asking a question? I have. Mr. Speaker, I'm telling you this is part of my resistance and you will hear me to the end. Bring the brutal soldiers who raped our daughters to take me out of here. I will say it to my end. I will say it to the end. There is nothing you can do to me. I'm wondering whether His Excellency, the President of the Republic, knows that the governors and the deals are behaving exactly when they are posted to West Cameroon as colonial masters. When they abuse people and insult them and do all they have done, we have to resist and we have to tell you our people will not be brought down because we came into this union as equal partners. Yes, sir. And I am done. And I am done. And we will resist. And there is nothing you can do to stop us because this is part of our culture that we inherited. You people who fear every administrator and every ruler, we challenge our rulers, we take them to task, and that is why they are accountable. Thank you very much. supplier un programme d'urgence de réhabilitation et de mise à niveau de toutes ces formations sanitaires victimes d'accidents. Et en évoquant cela, Monsieur le ministre, je ne peux m'empêcher de soulever le cas de l'hôpital de district de Bebda, qui n'importe que la, dé la désignation et pour lequel je vous avais saisi il y a deux ans. À ce jour, le plateau technique de cette formation reste on ne peut plus sourire. Or, cette localité est très souvent le théâtre d'accidents mortels, volant alors qu'elle marchait paisiblement et prudemment le long de la route. Monsieur le ministre, c'est un cri de détresse que je lance. J'espère qu'il sera entendu. Me tournant à présent vers le ministre en charge du développement urbain, je voudrais relayer les cris de détresse des habitants de certains quartiers de la capitale de notre pays. Mimboman 3, Etam, Bafia, Mkolombo, ils sont nombreux, Monsieur le ministre. Ces quartiers de la zone urbaine de Yaoundé confrontés à l'inaccessibilité en raison de l'état de dégradation avancée des voies. Nous pensons, Monsieur le ministre, qu'il est urgent de prendre en compte dans le programme d'urgence en cours certains de ces axes routiers pour permettre à notre cité capitale d'être un milieu de vie agréable pour tous ses habitants. 
Je voudrais également signaler à votre attention, au cas où vos collaborateurs ne l'auraient pas fait encore, le danger permanent que constitue la voie d'accès du reste très fréquenté reliant le rond-point école publique Bastos à la rue, à la rue dite Dragage. Depuis plusieurs mois, les usagers assistent impuissants à l'érosion progressive de l'étroite ruelle au point de franchissement de la rivière Mfunzi. Il serait indiqué d'y opérer une intervention urgente avant la survenance d'une catastrophe, c'est-à-dire l'effondrement total de ce qui tient encore lieu de chaussée. Voilà quelles étaient mes préoccupations, Monsieur le très honorable président de l'Assemblée nationale, et j'exprime d'avance mes remerciements aux membres du gouvernement pour la prise en compte de ces plaidoyers, afin que le ciel de l'émergence vers, la, vers la, laquelle nous conduit le chef de l'État, son Excellence Paul Bilia, se dévoile pour l'immense majorité de nos compatriotes. Je vous remercie. I have five or about five questions to ask the Minister of External Relations, sir. The first question, as you know, um, the part of the country, a good part of this country, is at war. And the High Commissioner for Refugees at the United Nations, in his last report, reported that, excuse the tautology, reported that he couldn't have access to the refugees of Cameroon because the government, refugees from Cameroon, because the government would not grant him authorization. I would like you to tell us if that is true or false, and why is it that the government would not grant authorization to an international body to come and check on the situation of refugees within the country? So that was the first question, sir. The second question, still on the question of refugees, how many Cameroonians are refugees in Nigeria? What is the government doing about it? And when can we expect the repatriation of these Cameroonians back to the homeland? Please give us simple, straight answers as I'm giving the questions. How many refugees are there? When can we expect them back? In the meantime, what kind of treatment are they receiving? The third question, sir, has to do with uh, certain Cameroonians who have disappeared from the face of the earth. I'm talking about uh, a gentleman called Seseko Ayuk Tabe. And I think, I say I think because we don't know how many, 47 of persons who accompanied him. Where is he or where are they? at this point in time. They will realize because there's rumors about there being some place between Nigeria and Cameroon. You as our Minister of External Relations, I think you are the right person to tell us where these persons are because they disappeared from a hotel in Nigeria. And as of now, they have not been heard from or seen by the public since. What is the state of their affairs? What is, their, what is their health like? Where are they? When can we expect to see them? That is question number three, sir. Question number four, legalist who, that you are. The question number four concerns the notions of extradition, how to extradite persons between countries where extradition treaties exist. Does the treaty, the extradition treaty of Nigeria, permit? Right, Honorable Speaker. Yes. Right, right, Honorable Speaker. We are the general questions. No, it's general question, sir. No, 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 because we are going to enter the no, text. No, no, no. We are going to enter the text, Mr. No, Speaker. No, no. And that's the rules of the assembly. Okay, I will not... I will then talk... 
I will talk about I will talk about Cameroon, sir. I am not a cartoon. I will now speak about Cameroon if you insist. Can I? I cannot speak about Cameroon. Please, I think uh, the subject is sufficiently important that I request the right honorable speaker. I am not speaking about Nigeria, sir. I, I am talking about Cameroon, sir, and I will permit me to. I will not talk about. I will not talk about Nigeria. I will talk about Cameroon then, if you will permit me. I need your coverage, sir. No. So I cannot talk about Cameroon. No, you have to speak about Cameroon and. Yes, I'm talking. I'm talking about Cameroon. Can I speak about Cameroon? I am not a, a parliamentarian from Germany. I'm a parliamentarian from Cameroon. I will defend the interests of Cameroon at all points. And I request the right honorable speaker to do the same. Please. We are talking about the interests of Cameroon. May I now uh, uh, continue my address to the uh, Minister of External Relations? I will not talk about Nigeria. If that bothers you, I wonder why it bothers you. You have to speak about Nigeria, uh, Cameroon, and Germany. Not about Cameroon and Nigeria. I will, the I will speak about Cameroon. I don't have to speak about Nigeria, no, about Germany. On that, I agree with you. Now, please, the fourth question I was going to ask you, and I'm now on Cameroon. There is a war going on in Cameroon. There is a war going on in Cameroon, and I'm talking about the methods of warfare. We are told, we are told that mines are being used contrary to international treaty which the Minister of Foreign Affairs has signed and defense. We are told that um, helicopter gunships are being used contrary to uh, using against populations. The purpose of all laws we pass is to secure our citizens. Now, if this is, if this, if this is true, that mines are used and helicopter gunships are being used, how can you assure the Cameroonian people that the ordinary citizens will be safe. The last question, sir, and you notice that I've been doing everything to say within my 10 minutes, if the speaker will permit me. The last question... No, 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 I cannot you. you cannot permit me to say within my 10 minutes? No. What is the problem? Can I finish? No, I'm not being evasive. Mr. Speaker, you are, using, you are using some terminology which is very harsh. I am not being evasive. I am not being evasive. I don't have any reason to talk about Germany, please. May I use my 10 minutes? I am talking about Cameroon as I must. It's my duty. Please. If you have problems with Nigeria or with me, I, I will not talk about Nigeria. Now the last question. The last question, Mr. Minister of Ex External Affairs, because you constitute one of the major links for peace in this country. All the treaties you sign with Germany, which the speaker would like to hear, is so that we can have peace and progress. At the moment I'm talking to you, that peace and progress is threatened. It is threatened by an escalation of war within the National Front. It is threatened by a destruction of the economy, by shooting at citizens indiscriminately. These are the things that threaten the peace, which treaty we are trying to increase or to improve. And that is why I am asking you, Ms. Mr. Minister of External Relations, take the message to your boss that Cameroon is at war, that we need the peace. Take the message to your boss that the economy of certain parts of this country has gone to the dogs. Take the message to your, bo to your boss. 
take the message to him that citizens are being shot like birds in the air. Please. And that, irrespective of what the, the, speaker, uh, the speaker says, Cameroon is at war. Now the question I ask you is, when will this dialogue take place so that we can stop the war? When will the, inter, the dialogue between citizens take place? Or do you want us to come here again and stop the assembly? We, don't, we, we have other techniques, but let the message go to him that Cameroon needs peace. I thank you, Mr. Minister. Deliver that message for me, and I hope that the uh, right honorable speaker will deliver the same message when he gets there. I thank you. The holding of the ordinary session of the Senate as of right this April 24th is to ascertain that the 100 elected and appointed senators are eligible for office. Having reached the quorum prescribed in the provisions of Section 358 of our standard orders, the Senate, the Senate may thus deliver it. Any points of order by SDF Senator Kemende Henry on the incompatibility of the post of interim president, Elvis Senator. The person of Chief Mukete is a board chairperson of Kampere, except he has resigned, of which he has a duty to show us his resignation letter in that capacity in this honorable house. The same interim bureau has one of the youngest senator whose age is also contested for proper verification. The same person who was the youngest five years ago is coming as the youngest, whereas she is supposed to be more than more than forty-five, more than forty-five. But we have person somebody Gamonore who is supposed to be less than of the SDF group. She, he has been disqualified. NUDP Senator Flambon Gayab said the law on the internal regulation of the Senate is clear. A verification office should be in place for the compatibility of members. Interim President Victor Mokete closed the debate saying the committee will be in place to handle that. Many are newcomers but coming with lots of new vision. Let us know the security function. We want to leave the representing our house and making it so we are looking forward to fine-tuning properly so that it can save our nation, whatever laws or bills are brought in. Their preoccupation for the second legislature, they say, concerns their people. The principal challenge, as I'm coming in here, has to do with the ongoing crisis in the northwest and southwest regions, which is uh, impacting negatively on the lives of our people, and we have to seek all measures to ensure that the issues are resolved with minimum delay be what is happening in the english-speaking regions of our country i cannot understand i cannot even dare to, uh, to accept coming to consider continue deliberating over laws i see the country were normal i come from a constituency where corpses are dropping at every minute where corpses, where there is fighting people are people's houses are burnt at every every single moment i cannot come here I and mean, make it because i've come here on the way everything is normal and consider that Everything about Cameroon is normal. There is no Cameroon without Norris and Southwest. And it is after all has been cleared by the 25 verification board committee members that the interim bureau will call for elections proper for the permanent bureau of the Senate for the 2018 legislative year. And this will go with attribution of their attributes, the symbol of their authority and office.
that representatives of the people have the power to say it as it is at any time. And if we come here and we shut them down, so what should we do? That is what I have to do. for them to be kind to you. That is what you would have wanted. I simply say, you the rules of the craft. Mr. Speaker, can you now, on this floor, give us where this National Assembly can dispose the issues that have to be Because it is more important than anything about the National Assembly from independence. Can you tell us? Now, we're going to amend. Can you tell us? Because we cannot talk about these things here, where are we supposed to talk about them? For God's sake, we keep eliminating us like this. Every time it is the same thing. We get to the church leaders, we be humiliated. Get to the lawyers, we be humiliated. We come here to represent our people and to tell me that I cannot talk about my people. Then you will need to shut my mouth with death. It cannot be. It cannot be. Take me to my. I will speak of problems. It cannot be done. Can I have a time when we will talk about the problems of our people? If you have no space here for that, it means that the country completely excludes us from this program. And I do not want that to be. You are supposed to make sure that we come here and represent the people, talk about their problems, so that you understand and take it to government. I'm happy that we are coming here when the Minister of Territorial Administration is here. And uh, I am wondering, because Mr. Minister, I sat here on the 2nd of December, that the reign of terror over in West Cameroon is bringing down the country, and nobody seems to listen. And then I come here and we are told that we cannot talk on behalf of those people. It is the right of the MP to represent the group of South Africa. No, I am not drinking any disorder. If you let us talk on our problems, nobody will be wasting this time. Because I have a full five years to discuss about the problems of my people. I have a full five years. So can you give me space to talk about it? If I don't have it, then you are saved and with the order on my head that I be arrested for representing my people. You are saying that the last remnant of anything we call democracy has died in this country. If an MP cannot talk, who else? And if an MP for the country is not safe, who else is safe? Thank you very much. Thank you very much. When injustice becomes law, resistance becomes a duty. The people of West Cameroon have a duty 